This gentleman has prepared this build for over two years. He bought everything slowly, filled up the inventory at his house. And then once he was ready, he called me and said, hey Craig, I have all these parts. I have an engine. I want you to come assemble it for me. And it is fresh from the machine shop. It is balanced. We did the freeze plugs and that rides like that once it's in there. And then remember the fourth timing Zane guide goes over here. You want to give them another once over just to really smush that silicon down because the little impact doesn't really do it too well. All right, you got it lined up. I got you on the back here. You watch the front. Hey guys, welcome back. So today on Modern Masters Auto, we are going to be doing the final assembly of the Edition 507 C63 engine. We are doing the cam timing, we're doing the accessories, we're doing the water pump, we're doing all that, we're putting the intake manifold on, we're putting the wire harness on. We're getting this bad boy ready to drop in the car because in the third and final video, we will be putting it in the car, we'll be test driving it, and we'll be getting it ready for the customer for its southern voyage back to Florida. So without further ado, let's get started. All right guys, so moving on now to finish these heads up. So these are the idler pins. This is what holds the idler gear in here for the cam. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this idler gear into place. I might have to dig out this one tensioner that's down here. So I'm just gonna hold this idler up here into position and slide this in. You wanna make sure that seat's the entire way. And then there's a hex head bolt that goes in here and that will lock that in there. But I'm gonna get both of the gears in the engine then I'll put the bolts in. So we'll get both of these set up here. And as always, you wanna use plenty of assembly lube on things like this because it's gonna take a minute for oil to get there for the first time. So you want to make sure anything that's spinning is well lubricated for the first startup. All right, so that pin is in there. You can see the either kind of rides back and forth on that. And then I'll grab the bolts that go into these holes here, get them torqued down. And then I will grab the pins that go in these holes here. And that's what holds the timing chain guides to the inside of the cylinder head here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that together. We'll get those bolts in there for the cam idlers. And I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to get some of the accessories on this thing first or go ahead and start putting in the cams. Hmm. So let me get the pins in here, get all that stuff situated, and I'll see which direction I wanna go in next. So I have the bolts that go in here and I like to put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. That's because that would be a very bad day if uh, one of these decided to back out. So it doesn't take much, just a little bit, a little dot right there. I'll go ahead and coat the other one too to get it prepped. And just goes in this hole right here. And we're gonna tighten that until it bottoms out. Get this other one here. All right, get him tight, click. Click. And now I can go ahead and reinstall the pins that go in here. This one is a different size than all the rest, which I'll show you before I put them in there. And this customer did a really good job at sourcing all of his own parts. I've never even seen anyone replace these pins, but he got them, so we're gonna use them. So here's your part number for your pins. And this, these three are all the same that go in the other guides here. So we're gonna make sure everything is lining up in here. And I'm gonna use the pick tool to lift up on the guide and make sure it goes into its hole. So if you see in here, there's the pin we just put through and it's going through a hole in the guide. So you wanna make sure that lines up and it will go into a pin hole behind the chain there in the back of the cylinder head. So get that one lined up. I'm gonna go ahead and line up all the other ones so I can press them in all at the same time. So get this guy lined up. Next, what I like to do is I'll grab a new bolt, thread it right in there, because I don't want to just I don't want to just beat directly on the pin, you know. And we're going to line up our guide. All right, 
right, looking good. Now we're just going to bottom out the pin. And we are into our hole in the back of the cylinder head there and we'll just move on to the next one. All right, I have this last pin here. This is what holds the tiny chain tensioner guide. So this one's a little bit more tricky. So what I like to do is grab my pick tool, just like I did the others, and hold it up while I watch the pin go in there. All right. So this tensioner is a little bit different than the others. The, all the others have a pin that's in the bottom of the timing cover here that you saw me put in. We assembled the timing chain. This has nothing. It just kind of flops around in there and the timing chain tensioner is what puts pressure against that and holds the bottom of it. So it is going to be loose flopping around in there until we put the tensioner in there, which I believe I'm ready to do right now. And one thing I didn't show on camera is went ahead and replaced these bolts with new bolts and the bolts down here in the timing cover. They are new as well. Took the cam caps and moved them around in the correct order. So I don't have to do too much thinking whenever I put the cams in. And that's about it. Okay, we have our new timing chain tensioner here. We're gonna go ahead and install it and get it torqued. Torque spec on the timing chain tensioner is 80 Newton meters. Okay, torque wrench is set to 80 Newton meters. Go ahead and get that torqued. All right, all set. And I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start installing the camshafts. All right, we have our tappets soaking in oil as usual. So we'll go ahead and plop them down into place. And I think I've mentioned this in other videos, but anytime you're doing the head studs, make sure the engine at least sits overnight to let the silicone get hard before you, it, you expose it to any kind of coolant or oil or anything. You don't want it to jeopardize the sealing of that silicone. But this has been sitting here all weekend, so it's nice and sealed up now. So even if a little bit of oil gets down in there from putting these tappets in, it won't be a problem. And you always want to make sure that these can rotate freely, spin freely, go up and down freely, because as the cam turns, it actually kicks the tappet a little bit and spins it. That way it keeps everything wearing evenly. So if the tappet can't spin, it's going to end up wearing a spot through the center of there and you're gonna have a bad time. I think there was one of the other E63 cam videos we did where I actually had a bad brand new tappet where it wouldn't even go down the hole and spin freely. So we warrantied that one out, got a new one in there and it spun perfectly. So it wasn't the cylinder head. It was definitely just, I don't know, just a bad coating or something on the tappet, but very important to make sure that they spin there freely. You also don't want it to go in there and stick because it, it can cause the valve to stay open. You can bend the valve that way. But these are all gliding in there nicely, spin easily. And I've been doing a pretty good job of wearing gloves and not doing stupid stuff like this, but I'm out of gloves and I got things to do today. So I guess I'm getting a little oily today. Might as well pop them in the other side over here. All right, on to the next step and look what we have here. Brand new OEM camshaft straight from the dealer. Very pretty. So you don't see that too often. They're very hard to come by getting them brand new and it's always out of stock. But like Craig said earlier, this guy has been putting this build together for about three years just to make sure everything is absolutely perfect. And I gotta say, he's done an excellent job at getting all the right parts. Everything is OEM. He packaged everything beautifully. I haven't had any problem with finding bolts or parts I needed other than like a seal or two here and there, which we've always we have in stock just about everything for these, so it's not a problem. But for a customer supplying their own parts, this is going very smoothly. All right, so now we can start putting our cams in. I went ahead and put plenty of Liquid Molly assembly lube all over all the lobes and the journals. We're just going to loosely have these in here for right now. I try to find a spot that was kind of laying there kind of comfortably, but this cam in particular is a little weird the way it wants to rest. So we're just gonna get some caps on here to hold it still until I get everything torqued. 
And you really can't mess up putting the cams in. They will not fit into the wrong head. So like right here, I just grabbed one to see and it will not fit onto this head. So you'll tell that this is an intake cam because it has the blue stripe here, which means it's cold air. And this will either have an orange or a yellow stripe for hot air. So this is an exhaust cam, but it's the one that goes on the other head. And we'll get this one here. This one's laying in there nice and easy. And then before I tighten any of these down, because I don't want any of the exhaust valves to open up, I'm going to put the crank gear back on the front here, and we're going to rotate the engine over until it's at 40 degrees, which is the safety point. This is just kind of keeping these cams here so they don't fall out. But before we get ahead of ourselves, I'm gonna go ahead and put that crank gear back on there to make sure the engine is at 40 degrees. That way no pistons can hit any valves or anything while we are timing the engine. Okay, so I unwrapped the crank pulley from the wrap that the customer wrapped it in and I was getting ready to install it and I saw a little bit of surface rust right on the edge there. It's not terrible. It looks a little bit worse in person. I'll see if I can get a piece there. Yeah, look at that. So definitely something you wanna keep an eye out for. That is bad enough to where it can tear that new crank seal and make it leak. So I see a lot of people make this kind of mistake with like CV axles and stuff like that. They put a brand new seal on there. And after they put the third seal in the thing, thinking, oh, this is a bad seal I got. No, nope. Look on the axle. There's probably a little bit of a rust ring on there. That and what's happening is that is what is tearing the seal on your axle or drive shaft or whatever. So the best thing to do is just get a little bit of emery cloth or sandpaper, really fine stuff, soak it in some engine oil and you're just going to sand that rust off of there and just kind of polish it. And I don't think this one's gonna take too much just cause it's just a little bit of surface rust. But it looks like it's cleaning up pretty good. I'm gonna keep sanding away at it for a little bit and then I'll show you the finished result before we put it on. Okay, so I got it shined up pretty good. As you can see, there's no more rust there. Nice and clean the whole way around. And it should slide right on there onto the crank. And I went ahead and lubed up the crank seal with dielectric grease whenever I installed it, just to really help everything slide on there. And there's the pin. All right, she is backed in there the whole way and looks like we are nowhere near 40 degrees. 40 degrees is way down here. So we're gonna spin the engine around to it hits the 40. And I'll go ahead and loosely put that bolt in there. So this is our new crank bolt. It gets torqued down to a ridiculous torque spec. I don't like to do that until all the cams and everything are installed and timed. So I'm just going to lightly put it in there by hand, just enough to turn the engine over for right now. It's, it's a really, really tight torque spec. So if you slip it, you know, you can, all kinds of bad things can happen. So I want everything to be where it is. That way nothing bad can happen. And we're just going to turn this engine over until the 40 degree mark on the crank lines up with this little notch right here. And I gotta say this thing feels great turning it over, there's just no resistance at all. All right, so you can see right here, there's our 40 mark on the crank pulley and then there's your timing mark on the timing cover. They are lined up. We're gonna keep it right there. And what that does is it puts it in a position to where none of the pistons are up the entire way. So it's impossible for a valve to hit a piston whenever we are moving these cams back and forth to get them in time. Because as you do that, you're going to be opening up and closing valves in the process just to get everything seated correctly to get the cam exactly where it needs to go. You have to move it a little bit and you don't want to risk hitting a piston. So I'll finish getting these tightened down the rest of the way now. Then I'll move on to the other side. And one thing you don't want to do is just start setting these down with an electric ratchet or anything. You want to slowly let the camshaft seat against the cylinder head. So nothing is binding. You're not forcing anything down in there. Just very slowly take it down, work your way across all four cam caps. And then once you have the cam fully seated, then we can torque each one of these caps in sequence and to their torque spec. 
but the biggest thing is just getting that cam to lay down there flat so it's not binding anywhere. Funny story, one of the, the neighbors here uh, that lives on this property at the shop set, um, he had a little Nissan SUV and he says, hey, I put uh, head gaskets on my SUV and it keeps throwing all these timing codes and doesn't have any power. Can you come look at it and see what I did? And he did all the timing right. Uh, he did a good job getting the engine together, but he didn't torque his cam caps and he has impacted them all on there and they were so tight that the cam couldn't spin freely. Um, so that was causing his timing code. So he just loosened up his cam caps, torqued them to spec. I think I let him borrow my torque wrench and I think he's still driving that thing. So just a little bit of, you know, over tightening things here and there can definitely damage your engine. But that's why there's torque specs. And you will feel it get a little tight in some places. That's normal, just don't fight it too much. Don't force anything. If you feel it getting tight on one of these caps, move on to the next one. Next one's probably gonna be loose then. You just work your way around until you get it drawn down. What you're doing is you're compressing the valve spring, putting this cam in. So you don't wanna be Compressing one end, and this end is, isn't even seated yet. You don't want to bend the cam. You can damage the cylinder head that way. Just take your time. And this cam in particular is compressing two cylinders at the same time. So it's pressing these two valve springs down and these two at the same time. Whereas the other cams, there's only going to be one at a time. Um, so this is going to be the tightest one to get the seat down. So I like to baby this one, and the others are pretty easy. Okay, so this side's in there. It's not torqued down yet. Everything is just in there nice and happy right now. We'll go ahead and move on to the other side. And this one's just like the intake cam on the other side where it's compressing two cylinders at the same time. So just take it slow, don't force it down. It is going to be a little tighter than the others and just work your way down. Okay, now that the cams are seated in there, we can torque the caps down. Torque spec on the caps is 10 Newton meters. So you're just going to start on the inside and work your way out. And once you get them torqued down, I like to grab a wrench and make sure there's no resistance. So you see how this one goes up and the spring pressure is pushing it back down into place. I'm not forcing it down. You wanna make sure they're not binding. So you'll grab a wrench, make sure it's not binding in any of the cam caps. If they are binding, what you wanna do is make sure the cam caps are in order which they are numbered, which we showed before. Or what you can do is the cam that's binding, move it and then loosen one cam cap. Move it again and you keep loosening cam caps until it frees up and then you'll check that one and it might need to get polished, something like that. Now that typically only happens when you're replacing a cam when it hasn't been worn or polished into the head yet. I haven't torqued this side yet, but while the wrench is in my hand, I'll check and Everything is springing back for the most part. Now keep in mind, this one here is a little different. It's gonna be a lot tighter because it is fighting two sets of valve springs at the same time, but we'll torque that down and then try again. And also, if you're having a trouble with your cam binding, make sure there's plenty of lube underneath all of these cam caps because not enough lube can definitely make it stick, especially with all that spring pressure you're fighting against. And now that we're fully torqued, we will double check for binding again. So this one's moving nice and free, as you can see, as well as the exhaust cam is moving nice and free as well. So we can go ahead and continue and put the cam phasers on. Okay guys, so we're going to move on to the next step of timing this engine. And the next step would be to put this bar 
in the back of the engine here so you can see where these little slots in the back of the cam are you're going to put this locking bar across here just like this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab a wrench and turn the camshaft until i can slide this in and lock it and then we can put the cam gears on or the phasers however you want to look at it quick tip is i always try to start with this one here first so for whatever reason if people try and put that cam gear on and they torque it from that way to this way I'm not sure really sure how but sometimes it ends up out of time on one of the cams so i always like to start with this cam i'll get this side in time cam gears on and then switch over to that side i'll get these cam gears on and i'll torque from this side over and i've never had a problem so i'm not really sure what difference it makes but it likes it so i'm gonna keep doing it that way grab a wrench and turn the cam until this can fit in here there we go the braces in the back now we can start putting on the phasers and i already have the tool that locks the gear in the back to get it lined up. It slides in a pin there and you tighten it up and it will align these teeth for the spring-loaded gear in the back there. Next, you will grab your turn ring. This is what the cam sensor picks up. And you're gonna look at these little shims here, these little seals. Make sure none of these are cracked, breaking. None of these are cracked, they need to be replaced. It will cause oil pressure to leak between these two journals here and you can have some variable valve timing codes. So these look like they're good. Get this set up and then you'll have a new friction washer for the back. This is what keeps it from slipping. There's your part number. One of these goes behind every cam gear. There is no pin or anything like that that keeps this thing in time. It's literally just friction and this washer here, if you feel it, it's a little gritty and that keeps it from sliding as well as the torque with the stretch bolt. So we're going to pop that in here like so. And we will grab a new bolt. These bolts are one time use. So next what you'll do is put the entire assembly in here and slide it back. Does not matter which way it goes. And actually I forgot to show you, there is a difference between intake and exhaust on the phaser. So you'll be able to tell right here where it says OUS right there, that means exhaust. And we'll slide that on there, line it up. And I like to just take my fingers and put this bolt on here by hand. And we're gonna leave this turn ring loose until we get the other timing tools on there before we torque everything down. So now that the cam gear is on there, we can take our tool off and this can spin freely until we torque that bolt down, but we'll get all of them in time before we do that. All right, same thing on the intake cam. Grab a new washer, get a new bolt. All of these look like they're in good shape and get our tool on here. I'll show you that part. You can see right here, this is EIN. So that's the intake cam. And you'll see these holes in the back of the cam gear is where this tool can slide in. So we're going to slide him in there. And then once he's in far enough to contact both sets of teeth, we'll start to tighten it down. It doesn't take much. It doesn't have to grab super tight or anything. It's literally just going to line up these two teeth, which is hard to do one-handed. So I'm going to set it down over here. So all you're looking for is for the teeth here in the back to line up so it will slide onto the idler here. And it's spring-loaded, so that's what keeps some tension on the idler and keeps these teeth from wearing out and getting sharp and uh, clattering and everything is that spring tension. I think some uh, older Toyotas use the same kind of gear setup on their phasers too. I think I've done a few of those. And it just keeps everything on there nice and tight so there's no play or no chatter in the gears whenever they're spinning around. And that one's back there the whole way. Still got a little bit of play in the tone ring. Got that guy off of there. And since once the tool is out of the way that compresses that spring, 
You can then put this brace on here and that will lock the cam in place so that you can put the timing plate in front of it and then we can torque it. And as you can see here, it'll have exhaust and intake. You gotta line these up. This will only fit on here one way. And you would think if there are as many times as I've done this, it'd be memorized where it goes by now, but that's not the case. There we are. So I'm gonna put some bolts in these two brackets and then all we have to do is torque these and this side is good to go. Okay, so now we have the one side set up. It just needs torqued. We're going to go ahead and move to this side and get it in time. Got our new washer, new bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and compress the gear on the phaser here. And as always, make sure you have the right phaser. So we have ein for intake right here. And now the same thing for the last one. And now we get our timing plate set on here. All right, so we are locked in time. I can go ahead and get my tool out of here. And once that tool is out of there, you can put that locking bar in. So this should slide down on here nice and easy. Okay, so now we have both sides locked in place. Everything is in time. We can go ahead and torque down our bolts. But I like to go ahead and just verify that we're still at 40 degrees. All of these are locked in. And now it's time to go grab the torque wrench. Okay, so our first stage is 45 Newton meters. And the reason I like to have two sets of these timing tools is exactly this, because we do so many of these and I can just work myself down the line here and just do 45 Newton meters. And then our next stage is a 90 degree turn. And it makes it really easy for me to just do our 90, one after another. So here's a 90. And that's all there is to it. So the engine is now timed. I can go ahead and put the valve covers on, the accessories, the intake manifold. I might leave the intake manifold off until I put it in the car. Uh, I haven't really decided yet, but since we are putting it in from the bottom, I'll probably go ahead and put it on, in which case I'll go ahead and show the torque specs and the procedure for that. So I'm gonna go get all the parts and everything ready and then we'll keep putting this engine together. Next step is to put on the front cam plates. This is what has the variable valve timing solenoids in there. So this is what pushes oil in through these different passageways to advance or retard your cam for the variable valve timing. So make sure you replace this new gasket here. Craig and I call them the squiggly gaskets whenever we need Rachel to order some more of them for us. And I went ahead and put a really light skim of dielectric grease on there. It helps to protect it from getting brittle and hard after some hot rips in this thing. After the engine getting hot, it really helps to prevent the seals from getting hard and brittle because these engines run really, really hot. Put the other side on. Just make sure none of the little metal seals here pop off of track. Make sure it slides on easily. All right. And we'll just get these bolted on. And 
And now that those are on, we can put our valve covers on here. So we have our nice clean valve covers, new gaskets, new tube seals, and new bolts. You can't have all this new stuff and forget to replace the bolts for your valve cover. You want everything to look pretty. So we'll get that guy sat on there, grab the other side, set him on here. So I'll just run all these down snug and then I'll hand torque all of them. All right, and now we can torque our Valkovers to 10 Newton meters. All right. Now that the engine's sealed up and, and nothing can get in there, I don't have to worry about covering it up overnight anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and get the majority of the uh, accessories back on here, water pump, thermostat, the oil filter housing, the tensioner, and then I'll go ahead and start putting on the engine harness. Okay guys, so I was about to install the oil filter housing and it was still you know, together, all bolted down. And I thought to myself, I bet you this is still the old filter from when it spun a rod bearing and they never cleaned this out. They just took everything apart and wrapped it up nice and neat. And lo and behold, there is a little chunk of metal in the filter material here, but down inside, I'll try to get a good shot. There is, uh, kind of hard to see, but bunts, that little puddle of stuff down there. That's all metal, big chunks of metal down there. There's some metal down, way down where that spring is. So it's a good thing I didn't put that on there. I'm going to go take this over to the parts washer, clean all this metal out, put a fresh filter in there, and then install it. So definitely a good catch. That'd be a bad day. So if you are rebuilding your M156 and you had bad things happen, even you know uh, your cam type of ate out or a rod bearing, take this off, clean it out. Definitely check that in there because a lot of metal is settling down this low point here and you don't want that to go through your fresh brand new engine that you spent a ton of money on with machine work and have to do it all over again. So let's get it cleaned up. All right guys, so to save some time, um, so this doesn't end up being a two hour long video, I went ahead and put in a lot of the accessories, got the tensioner on here, the water pump, thermostat, a couple other secondary air, a little couple little things just to speed things up. I'm waiting on someone else to free up so I can have a helper to torque this crank bolt. So I haven't forgot about that. But now I can go ahead and put the harness on. And I left the alternator off and the AC compressor off because some things go behind those. I don't want to block myself. So I'll show you where they go. So you wanna make sure you leave the AC compressor off because you have the oil temp sensor behind the AC compressor. You also have a hole here where the knock sensors go. So you want to run those kind of things before you put the mounts on, exhaust, anything like that. And on the other side, you just have the knock sensor here and the starter. So before we put any kind of long tubes or exhaust, anything else on, I want the starter in there and the harness completely ran down here and routed behind where the alternator goes. So I don't have to mess with it later. It makes it a lot easier this way. So let's go ahead and get this harness on here. You also need to have the harness on before you install the intake manifold because this part here will be underneath the intake. So we're gonna get this routed here. Down here is where the crank sensor goes. And then we'll take one bolt out of here. And that's gonna hold our harness up there for us. And now we can route everything around. And one thing that's very important whenever you put this harness on is you definitely want to make sure that this yellow connector is plugged into the oil temperature sensor because it will plug in, ask me how I know, to the AC compressor, which will make the AC compressor not work and the oil cooler run nonstop. So I had to take the AC compressor back off to switch this connector around. So not a big deal, but it is time consuming. So make sure that the yellow connector goes to the oil temperature sensor. They, if you laid a harness down here side by side, they're both the same length. They both look like they could go either way, but the yellow one definitely goes to the oil temp sensor. So there you are. So I'm gonna keep plugging away at this harness, just get everything laid out of the way, and then I'll get the rest of these accessories on here. And it would seem as though someone broke the center taking this apart, 
because the old one is still stuck in here. So let me dig that out of there. And I'll give you a closer look here. So here's our connector and it still has the old temp sensor broken off inside of there. And hopefully that will come out with some pliers. We also have these sensors here. I went ahead and plugged in the other side, but plugging them in will help hold the harness up tight out of the way. Looks like it got a little busted up whenever they took it out. All right, guys, so I ran into a little bit of a snag. So if you look here, we have our knock sensor. It's loosely on there, I haven't tightened it yet. But the clip just slides right off because there's a little metal spring clip on these that's missing. I looked everywhere through all the customers' bags. I can't find it anywhere. But luckily, Darren from VRP sent us a bag of junk, basically, and said, hey, if you guys can use this stuff, you can have it. And in there, I found two injector clips from a 55 harness, which happens to be the same clip I need for this style connector. So I'm gonna pop that on there. And Darren from VRP, thank you very much. You, sir, saved the day. So let's continue. All right, so I ended up getting pulled away for a few hours. We had a car get dropped off here from transport from California last night, and it was a whole debacle. I ended up being here till almost eight o'clock last night, helping the transporter unload the car because it doesn't run. Uh, it was just a mess in the rain. So I call it quits for tonight, but I came in this morning and got all of our accessories on. So I have the power steering pump, the AC compressor, and I took these oil cooler pipes over to the parts washer and I flushed them out really well with air. Just make sure there's no metal debris or anything inside of those. I'm trying to do that with anything I can possibly think of that oil ran through for this thing before we fire it up for the first time. I have the knock sensors installed with the metal heat shields on top. Those are very important. Don't forget those, especially since we're gonna be having long tubes on here. It's gonna be exposed to a lot of heat. And then we have the alternator on here. I'm saving the starter for when I put this on the engine table and I'll have the starter bolted up at the same time as the transmission. So I just gotta tighten up a few little things here. I still haven't found the little metal brackets that go here. They kind of protect this harness here on the edge here. So hopefully they turn up because I have quite the mess going on here. So this guy had everything all bagged up. It, some of it was out of order. I've had to unwrap everything. Everything has been wrapped really well in the shrink wrap. So it's definitely time consuming. Hopefully that wrap kept the uh, starter nice and fresh. So I don't want that going stale when it's been waiting for the rebuild, but I definitely have a mess as usual. This one's a little more uh, messy than before just because I'm constantly going back trying to find random bolts and stuff. But I'm going to get this cleaned up a little bit and then I believe it's time for me to put the intake manifold on. So we'll do that next. That means the entire engine will be assembled. I just need to go get the transmission and the engine table and we'll start putting this in the vehicle. Okay, so I went through all the bags and I still cannot find these little protective covers that go in here. So Mr. Customer, I know you're watching. If you can find me those and mail them to me, I will install them for you before you pick it up. I don't have any spares here else I'd give them to you. So you're just looking for the little metal bracket that goes on the side here, keeps all this up and I'll still be able to start the car and drive it and things like that, but it's more of like a heat shield to protect things from getting too hot here in the corner. So if you can find a set, send them to me. I'll put them on before you pick it up. So it's now time for me to put the intake manifold on here. I have new gaskets. And if anyone's been wondering where Craig has been, Craig has been in the hospital for the past two days with all kinds of problems going on. So I haven't heard from him today though. So I told Rachel if we don't hear from him by noon, it would be a no call, no show. And this is going on his record. So, but hopefully he's gonna be okay. I think he just needs to go home and take it easy for a little bit, but we'll see what happens. He usually doesn't listen to the doctors anyway, so he'll probably be here later today. Grab the intake, gaskets are on there. So actually, it looks like someone replaced the throttle body harness and the old plastic tabs are still on here that are broken. So I'm gonna get them off, snap these in, and then I can put the intake manifold on. So let me do that real quick. And one more thing before we put the intake on, we have the rubber insulators that go underneath the intake. These are brand new. I didn't even know you could get these new, but the customer went all out getting absolutely everything brand new for this engine. Well, this is amazing. So as always, here's the part number if for whatever reason you might need one of these. And here's the other one. 
which I guess these do get torn sometimes when you take the intake manifold off. Um, they're not super crucial. Sometimes we leave them out for better airflow, but these are brand new, so I'm definitely putting these in there. All right, so gaskets are in, the insulators are in. Now we can put the intake manifold on there. And one thing you always want to check before you put your intake on is look down in the bolt holes for the intake on the cylinder head. People break those all the time. And for whatever reason, some machine shops aren't very good at checking things over. For broken bolts and stuff, they just don't seem to care anymore. So I always find myself drilling those out. And I've made a mistake a bunch of times where I've taken the cylinder head, put it back on the engine just like this, and there's a broken bolt in there, which would have been way easier to take care of with the cylinder head off the engine. But I'm so used to machine shops being, you know, taking care of all that stuff for me, so I don't even have to worry about it. But I've gotten really good at getting them out. So there's that. So I'm just kind of moving the harness out of the way, making sure I don't break any connectors. This one's kind of jammed down in there a little tight. And I want this intake to lay perfectly flat. All right, so it looks pretty good to me. I think we are going to have to compress our new insulators just a little bit to get the light completely flat, but it doesn't seem like there's any resistance when I'm pushing down on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and we'll start putting the bolts in. And the torque sequence is a little weird for these intakes. Normally you would move from the inside out to torque any kind of cylinder head or intake manifold down, but these want you to start at opposite ends and just kind of work your way across. So we're gonna do that. The torque spec is 10 Newton meters and then a 90 degree turn. So let's get started on it. So we'll go ahead and get our bolts in here. And if you ever get your hands on one of these bolts, it is insane how light they are. I think these bolts and these for the intakes use this super light material. It's the same as like a, what they use on a lot of Porsche 911 exhaust manifolds. It's like, it's, you don't even feel it in your hand. It's like, it's not even there, but they're super strong. I'm just gonna run these down with my impact here. Just getting everything seated down. No pressure at all. I always start these by hand because they like to th cross thread really easy for some reason. And I don't have a fancy 3H drive torque wrench. I just have this old beam style torque wrench, which I love. I think Alex calls it uh, Moses' torque wrench or something like that. But it's really nice for setting preload on bearings, things like that, that you can't do with a normal torque wrench. So I, I love it. So let me make sure I'm starting at the right one. Yep. So we're going to start at number one here until we get to 10 Newton meters. This is why I drew it down with my impact because otherwise it would take forever. So there's beep, 10 Newton meters. Now you gotta go way over here, get this one to 10 Newton meters. And back over here, gotta run these down again. And I might see a problem. So let me look into that before we get too much further. Looks like someone took the intake apart for whatever reason. And down here is a missing bolt. So that's not really a bolt that you normally take out. Um, I know they replaced that throttle body harness, but if they did not silicone the inside of the intake correctly, that could mean bad things. So I'm gonna make a phone call. Let's see if I can figure anything out on that. And then we'll proceed. Well, it's a good thing I caught this bolt that's missing because I called the customer and he took apart the intake manifold to clean it and took apart the bottom piece to put a new throttle body harness in there. But when he separated the two halves of the intake, he did not re-silicone any of the seals or anything. So that would have been a giant vacuum leak. So unfortunately now I have to take the intake manifold back off, take it apart and seal everything up. But I don't think I've ever made a video of that. So that works out too, but it just does add some more time and work to this. So let's start taking her back apart. 
All right, so I have the intake on my little cart here. I have a pig mat underneath of there so it doesn't get scratched up. And we'll go ahead and start with taking all of these bolts off. And next you push this little tab down here for the harness for the throttle bodies. Snake that through here. And there is a pipe in here you pop off. And this slides off nice and easy. Now we can fold these two tabs back here. These are the ones that lock in these bolts right here. And we can take out all of the T30s. And make sure you keep these tabs because you're going to need them going back together. Just another good reason why we took this apart is this seal here was installed wrong. This needs to be flipped around so that little tab lays up here flat and it's not rolled over right there because that would have been a vacuum leak. So this is a good thing. So now we'll flip this back over. Looks like everything is done correctly in here. Nice and clean. We'll flip it back over. And start taking the top bolts off. <clears throat> now there's really no reason you really ever have to take the manifold this far apart is what we're going unless you have a problem with like one of the runners are broken internally or um i think it was a few months ago i was finishing up a rebuild on a c63 that another shop messed up and i went to go put the intake manifold on and it, a bunch of jingling around inside so i flipped the intake around took it apart and it was just full of metal it was about half a piston somehow uh just shredded inside the intake so i had to take everything completely apart just like what we're about to do now and clean it out really well some bolts here for this vacuum actuator pop this linkage off here hopefully without breaking anything there we go so hold him out of the way and let's see if it separates on its own won't until i take that last bolt out huh and we have one more bolt here up in the front. So I just need to take off that map sensor. And if you didn't silicone it, it should come apart pretty easy. Maybe he didn't, he didn't actually take this apart this far. No, no, it, it was apart. <laughs> It's coming apart way too easy. So let's give it a little pry. Yep. All right. Yeah, so typically that takes me forever fighting and scraping and soaking it and degreaser to get that to separate. So this was definitely taken apart before. And just look how much junk is still left in there. That literally just fell apart. That should have been very, very difficult for me to separate. But while it's apart, I'll go ahead and clean it, get all these surfaces cleaned up, and then I'll reseal everything with the right stuff. I'm not going to go much further than this in tearing it down, but if you wanted to, like maybe you have a broken runner or something like that, the only way that these come out is if you take the whole thing apart. So you can see this little lever right here. So that just pulls out, and then you'll be able to slide the runners up up off of there you can, then you can unbolt all these t30s in here and you get the joy of trying to pry that up out of there because it's also silicone the whole way in there so i'm just going to clean these surfaces here and clean up the plate that I just took off so you have a good solid seal around here 
to make sure there's no vacuum leaks. Okay, so after a lot of scraping and scrubbing, I was able to get all the silicone that was on this surface all around here. And then I just went ahead and took this entire plate over to the parts washer and dug all of the silicone that was down in these little valleys here out of there. If you have a parts washer or access to one, it does a great job at loosening up any silicone that may be stuck on something. I don't know what it is, but it really, really helps separating like valve covers and things like that on these engines that are stuck together with silicone. So what we'll do now is I'm just gonna lay this on here and we'll just put a real nice thin bead of silicone all the way through here and you'll just follow everything here. And you don't wanna get too heavy, just a real thin little bead pressed down in there. You definitely want to make sure it sticks because for whatever reason some spots not sticking too good. All right, looks like I went a little too light on this spot here. I'll just get a little heavier real quick. And everything looks nice and sealed up to me. I might touch this spot up right here. So Nice, neat silicone job on there. Now all we need to do is flip it over and set it back down on there. Make sure we don't get any silicone on the tips of our injectors. So before I put the throttle bodies or any of that back in there, we're gonna go ahead and flip this back over and get all of this bolted down so that can be sealed up and start drying. And I also need to find a extra bolt for the one that he was missing, but I should have one around here somewhere. If we don't have one, nobody does. So just like the timing cover, I'm going to impact all of these in and then I'll go back through by hand and retighten them because I'm sure that silicone is going to squish down a little bit and they'll get loose again. Get our map sensor back in here. So now we can flip it back over and we're going to reinstall the throttle bodies. But first we're going to flip this seal around so it's in here correctly. So we'll flip this around here like so. So now the seal's on there nice and tight. The tab is in here folded in. It's not going to get caught on anything. That seal is going to lay flat and it's not going to leak. Get him on here. It's going to lay just like this. We get our little bracket on here. And the customer already did a pretty good job at lubricating the seal. That goes on this was, I assume he used some dollar grease. I think that's what he told me on the phone. So that's good. But one thing he missed is you should put some dollar grease around this little black thing here where it goes through the intake. So we're definitely going to do that this time. Get all these bolts back in here. And don't forget about our little metal tabs here. And I like to go through and just double check those by hand too. And now we will lubricate this just lightly with some dollar grease. And then you see this plastic tube right here it needs to line up with this inside of here. So we're gonna feed this through here. And sometimes this fights me and sometimes it pops right in.
All right, we'll get the rest of these bolts in here. Make sure this gasket is laying correctly, which it is. I remember we're gonna have one missing bolt. So I'm gonna tighten all these down and then I'll go look for a bolt and we'll be good to go. I'm also going to, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a little bit of excess silicone that's squished out. And I'll get a rag and I'll wipe that out of there so it doesn't affect any of the airflow or anything. So you want it to be nice and smooth. Got the intake laid back on there for the second time and I went ahead and installed our new PCV valve just to make it easier while the intake was off again. And I went ahead and got this coolant pipe on here just because the bolts are a little hard to get to with the intake on. So I went ahead and put that on. And you also have your coolant bypass valve on the back of the cylinder head here. Basically all this does is this allows coolant flow to run through here. And then this goes into the heater core through the firewall right there. But everything is seating on there nicely. All the harnesses are out of the way. Nothing's being pinched. And I can go ahead and try and retorque this thing a second time. Okay, so the bolt's in here for the second and hopefully final time. And it looks like the fuel rail is a little loose too, so I'm gonna make sure I tighten those up. And if you're taking your intake apart like we did and your engine's in the car, I would definitely let that silicone set up and dry overnight before you start the car for the first time. It's because uh, the right stuff works really well for like oil leaks and stuff to be able to use immediately, but it stays kind of goopy for a while. So it's okay for like oil pans, things like that, if you're gonna use it right away. But things that like have vacuum, they're you know, sucking in, I would uh, I'd let it set up for a while. All right, so now we need to, need to torque again. Start with our 10 Newton meters. And work our way down the line. And now that we're onto the second stage, you're going to do the same sequence, but it's just a 90 degree turn. So we'll do a 90. And then what I like to do is come in with a marker, just like doing the head bolts, and I mark a mark on there showing that I did the 90 so I don't do it twice because not only am I losing my hair, I'm also losing my memory. So I don't want to torque those twice. So I've got 90 back here. Mark him and we'll just keep working down the line. And then once you do this 90, these bolts are no longer reusable. So if I would have put this intake on here, then notice that bolt was missing, took these bolts back off, I would have had to replace these bolts because anytime you're doing any kind of degree, you're stretching the bolt. And I think that's why I see a lot of these bolts broken off in here is people re will reuse them due to 90 degree torque or just impact them in. And it, since the bolt is stretched, it weakens it so much that it just breaks off in the hole. So definitely don't reuse these bolts. All right, that's it. The only thing I have left to do to finish this engine is some vacuum things here, which we'll put on once the engine is installed and torque that crank bolt. So let me see if I can grab someone. Maybe I'll wait till Craig gets back so we can torque that thing together because it's not fun doing it by yourself. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. Rusty did all of this and he killed it. We're gonna do some long tube headers in the next one, put some motor mounts in this and drop this bad boy back in. But if you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up. Share with your friends. And subscribe. And most importantly, make sure you guys click that subscribe button so you get to see the next video the second it comes out. Take care, guys. All right, come on, come get, come over here. How are you, how you want me to do it? I'd like you to take it. I pulled up to a house about seven or eight. Yo, to the cabbie, oh, smell you later. I looked at my kingdom and I'm finally here. I'm the fresh prince of Modern Masters. Oh, I feel like shit. all right. You better chill out before you get back in the hospital. Oh, I know. We are finishing assembling the edition. Ah, but.
Well, you don't like this? You don't like to wear your hat like this? Just, just imagine me on the V-Rod. Just stopping at red lights. What's up, bro? And then just revving the piss out of it, just to make sure everybody knows it's running. For no reason. <laughs>